First talk is going to be on uh, leakage resilience zero knowledge by Sanjam Garg, Abhishek Jain, and Amit Sahai. And uh, Sanjam is going to give a talk. Hi, uh, thanks, Shukrini, for the uh, introduction. Today I'm going to talk about uh, leakage resilience zero knowledge. Uh, this is joint work with Abhishek Jain and Amit Sahai at UCLA. So traditionally, when we talk of cryptography, uh, we allow the adversary access to, to uh, devices in, in a, in a well-specified input-output behavior. So it can in, send the behavior according to this well-specified interaction. But as it turns out, in, uh, uh, this is not always the case. An adversary can potentially, in certain cases, ordain, obtain additional information about the secret that is possessed by our cryptographic system, and which could ultimately lead to the co total collapse of the security of the system. And uh, this is what is dealt in the, the area of leakage resilient cryptography where we allow the adversary some kind of uh, additional like, access to the, the cryptographic system, and it can obtain additional information about the secrets that are held in this uh, device. So a lot of uh, prior work has happened in this uh, exciting area of leakage resilient cryptography, uh, but it has focused towards uh, leakage resilient uh, primitives and uh, to temper resilient and leakage resilient uh, circuits. The, however, on the side of leakage resilient uh, interactive protocols, the work has been uh, severely limited, especially in terms of the kind of leakage that is permitted in uh, these, 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 these uh, protocol settings. In this work, we, we, we focus in the setting where we allow leakage on the entire state of the honest parties. Uh, during the protocol execution, it can be arbitrary kinds of leakage. Uh, anytime, there is no restriction. So that is the focus of this work, and this is how it departs from previous work. So uh, when we talk of protocols, zero knowledge is a, a very fundamental uh, notion in interactive protocols, and it makes sense to, to study leakage resilient in the context of uh, zero knowledge proof protocols. So let me give you a brief uh, overview of, uh, of, the, of the setting. So in a zero knowledge proof system, you have a prover and a verifier. And the prover is trying to convince the verifier about the validity of the statement x. You can think x as a graph, uh, and the prover is trying to convince the verifier, let's say that this graph is Hamiltonian. Okay? And uh, we require this, this, in this setting, the security against the cheating verifier, shown by red hair. And we require that this cheating verifier should not learn anything beyond the validity of x. So in particular, in the example I gave, it should not learn anything more than the fact that the graph x is Hamiltonian. Okay? And this is formalized by saying that for every cheating verifier, there exists the simulator S that simulates the view of this cheating verifier. OK, so let's, moving on to the setting of, of, of leakage, we want to allow this cheating verifier, in addition to, to, to the ability to interact with the prover in this protocol, with the ability to obtain certain uh, uh, leakage information from the prover. And how he does that is he's allowed to send leakage queries anytime during the protocol. So you can think of this as a function or a circuit that the, that the verifier sends to the prover. And the prover evaluates this function or circuit on its entire state. In, in particular, the input, that's the, the witness corresponding to the, to the statement, and all the random coins that have been used in the protocol so far. So he evaluates this, this uh, function or circuit and sends back it, to the, it back to the verifier. So I've shown it by just one leakage query, but you can think of arbitrary number of leakage queries which are adaptive and can happen anytime during the protocol execution. So in this setting, if you wanted to guarantee that the verifier cannot learn something, any, uh, cannot learn anything beyond validity of, of the statement X, it seems unreasonable because if you just thought of the, you can think of F as an identity function, and in this case, this function will leak uh, the entire witness. And so uh, we cannot hope of achieving the standard notion of, of zero knowledge. So, but uh, before we move on to what can be achieved or what we hope to achieve, the question to, uh, there are some models that have been considered that I want to briefly touch on and say a few words. So one possible model you could consider is only computation leaks in information model. Uh, in this, uh, information is only leaked when some kind of computation is performed. But as it turns out, this model is often problematic in certain application scenarios, as has been shown earlier. Uh, and, and, and so we don't want to consider this, this, this weakening but I also want to stress that even if you were to assume this model, we have an impossibility result that you cannot achieve standard notion of zero knowledge. Another notion could be to have some kind of a, a pre-processing phase where the, party, uh, uh, the prover can do some leak-free pre-processing. 
And uh, the point here to note is, again, this limits applicability, and we don't want to, to limit ourselves to, uh, by, by having a leak-free phase before the protocol, anytime during the protocol, uh, or after the protocol. And again, just like uh, in the computation only leaks uh, information model, if we were to only as, as, uh, assume leak-free pre-processing, again, we can argue that it would be impossible to achieve the standard notion of zero-knowledge. Uh, so, again, before I say actual definition, uh, let me summarize what we want. We want to have a, a setting where we can leak in the entire state of the prover anytime during the protocol. We don't want any leak-free phases. And we want a meaningful notion that is useful in application scenarios. As I mentioned earlier, we cannot achieve the standard zero-knowledge guarantee just because the simulator has no way of simulating queries on, uh, uh, which, which are directly related to the witness. Uh, so we will have to, in some sense, relax the definition. So uh, the, the, the goal is to be able to simulate these leakage queries, right? And uh, to help the simulator achieve this, we're going to allow the simulator access to a witness oracle. So witness oracle, uh, the simulator has access to this oracle that, has, that is in possession of this witness, and the simulator can obtain uh, responses to, to queries from this uh, witness oracle. And we are hoping that simulator is going to be able to use this witness oracle in being able to simulate these leakage queries. Okay? Uh, so we have a, a kind of a real ideal paradigm where the ideal world is also leaky. That is, in particular, as I said, it can obtain leakage about the witness. Now, of course, this function f, which the simulator queries the witness oracle, could be the identity function, and the simulator could leak the entire witness in which case it can trivially simulate the protocol and wouldn't achieve what we, de we desire, that is to help the simulate. It's, we want to help use this witness oracle only in simulating these queries. So we want to restrict the simulator's ability to use this witness oracle. And how are we going to do it? We're going to limit how much leakage he can obtain from this uh, uh, witness oracle in the ideal world. So in the, the ideal world, we want to consider uh, this li limiting this, this leakage, and of course it has to be in, in correspondence with the amount of leakage that happens in the, the real world, so it should be in some sense proportional. So for, for, for that, you can consider any function. We consider a simple uh, uh, linear function where lambda is the leakage parameter, and the total leakage in the ideal world is, is bounded by lambda times the total leakage that happens in the real world. So you can see if uh, this parameter is, is close to 1, then we can say that the, the verifier in the real world learns nothing beyond the validity of the statement x and the leak information. So he does learn something more, but the protocol itself and the leakage are not conveying something more than what the leakage alone is conveying. So this idea of having a, leak, a leaky ideal world notion, wherein you have a witness oracle in the ideal world, is not completely new and goes to the, to the idea of knowledge complexity introduced uh, by Goldreich and Petranc uh, in 91. And uh, uh, the, the, the crucial difference, however, in our setting is that in their setting, the protocol inherently leaked the information. The idea of the witness oracle was to help in, in the simulation of the protocol that was inherently leaking information. In our case, the leakage is because of side channel attacks. Our protocol doesn't leak any information. It is to simulate the side channel leakage in the side channel attacks that we need the the, the, the ideal uh, oracle. If there is no leakage happening in the, the protocol, then we would not need any ideal oracle in the simulation. So at this point, I also want to, to stress a, a point of leakage oblivious simulation. So I mentioned briefly that we are trying to restrict the, 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 the simulator's ability in using the witness oracle and, uh, and, and so that it uses it only in simulating the leakage queries. And, and, and uh, but we want to restrict it even further in the sense that we don't want the simulator to actually see the answers of the leakage queries, but just to, to, to query and send the responses back. So for every leakage query that happens in the real world, he'll massage that query and send it to the witness oracle, obtain the response, and that is sent back directly to the, the cheating verifier. The simulator does not get to look at the answer. So this kind of uh, uh, str stronger properties needed for some applications. I'm not going to talk a lot about it. You can look into the paper for that. So now getting to our results, uh, uh, the main result in our paper is a leakage resilient uh, uh, zero knowledge interactive proof system based on general assumptions where the, the leakage parameter lambda is, is 1 plus epsilon for any constant, uh, small, small constant epsilon that you want. And in fact, we show that uh, uh, for, for any, 
that this 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 parameter is 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 optimal in the sense that you cannot do anything better than than one. So to the best of our knowledge, this is the first positive result on handling arbitrary leakage during protocol execution. The second uh, result that we have is on leakage resilient non-interactive zero knowledge proofs. This is also under standard assumptions. Finally, I want to uh, briefly point to you about the exciting concurrent work by Tansky, Kennedy, and Halevi. Uh, we also have some applications of our, our results. The first application is to universal composable uh, secure multi-party computation. So in, in the universal composable setting, uh, composable multi-party computation setting, uh, the, we know that, uh, the, that we need a, a trusted setup to achieve uh, uh, this kind of composability guarantees. And the known results are known. Uh, we, we know results based on tamper-proof hardware. But in all these works, the assumption is that the, the, toke, the tokens that are used are completely tamper-resilient. In this work, we relax this assumption and say that even if, the, if you could leak certain information from the tokens, you could still achieve UC. The second result that we have is on, on fully leakage-resilient signatures and boundary leakage and continual leakage model. Uh, th this result is not new. This was only recently uh, presented in, in, in several papers. However, the key point that we have new is that our scheme is also secure in the noisy leakage model, which the earlier schemes were not. So let me get back to the technical part and, and, and touch uh, on the, the, the core technical part that we have is the, the 1 plus epsilon leakage resilient zero knowledge proof system. So as I mentioned earlier, the goal is to be able to simulate these leakage queries that happen during the interaction. And for that, we have the witness oracle to help the simulator in achieving that. And, and, and in doing so, the simulator must be consistent with the past actions. So what I mean by that is the leakage might happen at a point after certain steps in the protocol ha have happened. And then the responses of these leakage queries must be consistent with the past actions. Furthermore, uh, the, this leakage and then and the, 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 the protocol itself should not reveal to the verifier that the simulator is cheating or fooling the, cheat, the verifier in the interaction. So in particular, you can think of uh, this function to be the identity function. I love the identity function. And, and, and in this case, in, it, it would in particular uh, leak the input, that's the witness for the statement, and all the random coins. And uh, this, is, this, this might sound something like just corrupting the prover at this point. And this is actually the case, because if you're given the entire state to the cheating verifier, then that means that given the input and the random coins, the, the, this together should explain the actions uh, of the simulator just as an honest prover strategy. So what I mean by that is, given this input and the random coins, if uh, the prover followed the honest prover strategy, then it, would, it should generate the exact same messages as were generated in the protocol. This sounds very similar to adaptive security. Uh, and, and then the key question would be, can we use adaptive security to achieve uh, leakage resilience? Uh, to, to, to say a little bit on that, I would recall a little bit about adaptive security. So in adaptive security setting, adversary can corrupt any party during the protocol execution as it wishes. And whenever a party P is corrupted, the adversary learns the entire state, the input and the random coins of the prover. Uh, and given uh, now the job of the simulator, who is simulating this honest party P in the interaction, is that whenever this party P gets corrupted, it must generate, uh, uh, produce the, the, the input and the, the associated random coins. It gets the input at that point as input. And it must generate random coins such that uh, it's consistent with the transcript, just like the previous setting. Given the input and the random coins and following the honest prover strategy, the same messages that were sent in the protocol must have been sent, uh, generated in the transcript. So this can be achieved using standard technique called EQ local commitments. Uh, I'll, I'll just get to, uh, to EQ local commitments in a, in a bit. So the question is, can adaptive security be used to, to get leakage resilience? So let's consider a, a simple example and, 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 and try to see from there how it goes. So let's consider the simple example of graph Hamiltonicity, where both the prover and the verifier have this graph in their head. And the prover is trying to convince the verifier that this graph is Hamilton. Okay. So he picks this, he, he takes the same graph, and he randomly permutes this graph. And he send, it generates a commitment to the graph, which he sends to the verifier. At this point, the verifier sends the, a bit b. And the prover, if the bit b is 0, just uh, opens all the commitments and, and, and proves that this is a random permutation of the original graph. 
And if the bit B is 1, he, he opens the, the, uh, the, 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 the cycle in the graph. And this, uh, this protocol can be argued to be a uh, zero-knowledge protocol with some modifications. And, and, and to, achieve, to make this protocol adaptively secure, if the simulator was to use EQO, if the, the protocol, were, if you used EQO commitments in the protocol, this protocol would be adaptively secure. Just let's see how. So the simulator would behave in the same way. It would just uh, randomly permute the graph, generate EQ local commitments, and send it to the verifier. The property of the EQ local commitments is that the simulator can open any value in any way he wishes at any point. So he can open the value to 0 or 1 as he wishes in the protocol. So he sends this uh, EQ local commitment to the verifier. And the, as you can think, because the simulator has this ability to magically open anything to any he wants, it would be adaptively secure. But the problem with leakage resilient uh, is, is that what if a leakage query happens before the challenge bit B is actually sent? In this setting, the simulator must open, and this challenge query could actually, this leakage query could leak certain information about the openings. And at this point, the simulator must remain consistent during this response to the leakage query and the, 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 the responses that it sends later on without actual knowledge of the bit P. And which turns out to be problematic uh, and hard to achieve in our setting. Okay. So uh, the question, as it turns out, so because of these reasons, adaptive security does not imply leakage resilience. And just to, to recap on why that's the case. So the point is that in case of uh, adaptive security, there is no need to simulate a party after the corruption happens. So after a party P is corrupted, I just provide random points and input, and my job is done. But in, in case of leakage resilience, even after a party is corrupted, in some sense partially corrupted, that is some information about its random state is leaked, I still must continue to simulate uh, my future actions. And without knowledge of what was leaked, and you know, it, there could be future leakage as well. And the future messages must be consistent with the previous leakage. The future leakage messages must also be consistent with the previous leakage. So the, the, the key idea that we have is, 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 is to have two ways for the simulator to cheat. One way of cheating would be uh, to allow the, the simulator to cheat in the protocol messages. The other method would be to, uh, to, to, to allow for cheating in the leakage queries. And we need to make, us, uh, uh, it sure, uh, make sure that the, since there is a delicate balance between the two the way two techniques interact, that the simulator does not step on its own feet uh, in, in, in using the two techniques together. The, the second method of cheating that we use is not new. It's a, we just extract V's challenge for simulation. The interesting part is that we need to use both the techniques simultaneously in our protocol to achieve uh, leakage resilience. Further, as I mentioned, we wanted uh, a precise bound on the amount of leakage that happens in the, the real world in the ideal world with respect to the amount of leakage that is queried in the real world. And, and for that, we use ideas from, from, from Mikali Pass for precise simulation. And it allows us to, to get a, a tight bound on the amount of leakage that happens. The second result that we have is on leakage resilient non-interactive zero knowledge proofs. Uh, as I said, the problem with leakage resilient uh, interactive proofs was that I had to simulate even after a leakage query happened. But in the case of non-interactive proofs, this problem does not arise, because by definition, these proofs are non-interactive. And, and, and therefore, the problem that adaptive security does not imply leakage resilience does not come up. And therefore, adaptive resilience implies uh, leakage resilience. So you could pick up any off-the-shelf uh, adaptively secure uh, leakage resilience uh, NISIC proof system, uh, like GOS, and it would automatically be uh, uh, leakage resilient. And uh, I have four seconds left. Thank you. While the next speaker is setting up, we have time for a quick question. All right, so let's thank Sanjam again.